Our next speaker has also harnessed the power of partnership and innovation to achieve great things, improving access to medicines for remote communities across Africa. Simon Berry is the founder of Cola Life. Created in 2008, Cola Life looked at the techniques used by the producers of FMCGs, fast moving consumer goods, to get their products into remote markets. They then applied these same techniques to improve access to life-saving medicine for some of the hardest to reach people in the world, building successful partnerships with the likes of Coca-Cola, GSK and Johnson & Johnson, as well as governments and NGOs. Please welcome Simon Berry to the stage. Thank you very much. Um, when I received the invitation to speak here, I was very honoured, but at the same time slightly anxious. Um, Color Life is not working with non communicable diseases. In fact, we're working with one of the most infectious diseases, diarrhea. But here I am. And I'm here because the Takeda people convinced me that there was enough in the Cola Life story that could be adapted and adopted by people working in, with NCDs. In particular, I've been asked to talk about how the Cola Life innovation came about, um, out of the box thinking, and how we formed partnerships and worked collaboratively. Just a little bit of background, this is the only bullet point slide, don't worry, but I thought I needed to set the scene. Cola Life is a very small UK registered charity. We have two full-time workers and one part-time. Uh, we, we are governed by five voluntary uh, trustees. Our focus is on saving children's lives. We are totally independent, don't be fooled by the name. Most of uh, our work has been done in Zambia so far. Um, we are not looking to grow the organization, but we are looking to have a global impact through disruptive innovation, um, establishing smart partnerships, and freely sharing in an open source fashion all our findings and learning. And finally, I and none of the Cora Life team have any commercial interest in the products that we've designed and I'm going to describe to you today. This is the team. Jane is my partner in life, and Cola Life, and uh, sorry, and Rohit. She, she works for me full time, and Rohit um, works with us part time. He's based in Toronto. He designed our trial and looks after the m &E, the monitoring and evaluation aspects of what we do. He's also got a doctorate in public health, so keeps us on the straight and narrow in this public health field. As I said before, the foundation of our work is in Zambia, but increasingly we're looking to encourage other countries in sub-Saharan Africa to look at what we've achieved in Zambia and apply the learning to their own circumstances to transform access to diarrhea treatment. So what is the problem we're working on? Well, it's this. One in eight children in sub-Saharan Africa do not make it to their fifth birthday. This is today in 2017. That's more than 10%. Just as shocking as that statistic is, the second biggest infectious killer of children is diarrhea. You saw it on the slides earlier today. Um, diarrhea is the second biggest killer right now. It kills more children than malaria and HIV combined. This is the first time that it, diarrhea has been mentioned in this, in this conference. And it's not just about mortality. 40% of children in sub-Saharan Africa are stunted, which means they're too small for their age. And diarrhea is a key contributor to stunting. If you are stunted at the age of two, there is permanent damage. You will never reach your full potential. The amazing thing is that we've known how to treat diarrhea for three decades, at least. The current recommendation is oral rehydration salts and zinc, an international recommendation. The fact is that 99% of cases of diarrhea do not get this treatment. This brings me to the idea. Coke gets everywhere. Wherever you go in the world, the most remotest community, if there's a shop, and there most likely is, there will be Coke in it. And many other things, actually, not just Coke, 
many other commodities that people actually want. But you'll not find the simple medicines needed to treat diarrhea. While community shops are fully stocked from floor to ceiling with the things that people want, the public sector really struggles to keep essential medicines in its storerooms, including ORS and zinc. So this brings me to the idea. If Coke gets everywhere, why don't we put the medicine in the Coke crates? The logic was very, very simple. If the Coke gets there and the medicine's in the crates, then the medicine will get there too. The design of our anti-diarrhea kit, as we call it, started here with focus groups of caregivers, mostly women, uh, talking about the challenges they face treating diarrhea in the home. We learned so much from these focus groups. The first thing that these women told us was that the oral rehydration salts that they're given, the sachets that they're given, which make up one litre, are far too big for treatment in the home. And they're right, those sachets were designed for use in institutions. They make up a whole litre. And that's great in an institution where you've got five children lined up with diarrhoea, it makes sense to mix up your ORS by the litre. If you're treating a child in the home, it makes no sense at all. That child is likely to drink 400 mils in 24 hours, and any solution that's left after that period should be thrown away because it gets contaminated. So you're actually recommending people make up medicine and throw more than half of it away. Now that's a waste of medicine. As far as these women are concerned, it's a waste of safe water. The other thing they told us is that they didn't know what a litre was. In these situations, very few people will have anything that measures one litre. And most of them won't know what a litre is. The other thing that these women told us is the, the amount of money that they would be prepared to pay for a diarrhoea treatment kit available in their shop and, um, and how they would like it to be branded, what they would want it to look like. And so this is the result. Uh, Kitchen Moyo, I've shown you before, it fits in coat crates. Um, it's attractive, aspirational even. It contains 200 mil sachets of ORS. So you make it up by the glassful, the child drinks it within 24 hours and you make up another glassful. The packaging itself can be used as the measuring device for the water that's needed. It can be used as a mixing device and a cup. Now we didn't design it as a cup but once kids see that mixing going on, the whole thing turning orange, they grab it, even though they may feel it, be feeling a bit poorly. Before I can tell you what we did next, I want to talk to you a little bit about the approach that we use. And our approach is based on one thing, which defines everything else. And that is, we don't want to do anything that is not self-sustaining after we're not there. That is our golden principle. That means we, Cola Life, cannot become part of the solution in any particular location. Because if we were, when we left, part of the solution would leave. That means we have to do everything through local organizations and local processes. We have to engage what's available locally. We have to work in partnership. But partnership comes with its own warning message. You've heard one or two earlier on. But a key one for us is that these partnerships have to be smart partnerships. In our case, we know that in every single country in Sub-Saharan Africa, all the organizations already exist to transform access to diarrhea. They're already there. We have the policy makers, we have the regulators, we have the manufacturers, we have the distributors, we have wholesalers, we have retailers, we have doctors, nurses, community health workers. They're all there. So there's absolutely no point, in fact it's a negative thing, to set up a parallel system to do what those organisations and people were set up to do. So we don't do that. It is also not a good idea to move into a situation and put yourself 
at the center of a partnership. A smart partnership doesn't have a single organization at the, at the center of it. It has a vision, a vision to change something. And the vision that our partnerships have is this vision to literally transform accessibility to diarrhea access. And if you can get these smart partnerships working, the people who facilitated them put those strings in place, put those lines in place, can actually step away and the partnership will continue. Okay, back to the story. To test this idea of kits in coke crates, we set up a very large trial, which was supervised by Rohit and UNICEF and the Ministry of Health and had um, uh, uh, oversight by Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. And the results were outstanding. We sold 26,000 of those kits to retailers serving these remote communities that had no money. We increased treatment rates with ORS and zinc from virtually zero to 45% from a standing start in 12 months. We took two thirds off the distance that caregivers had to travel to access medicine because it was available in their local shop which are far more numerous and therefore closer to their home. And we transformed, again, that word transform, we transformed the accuracy with which they measured the ORS because the measuring functionality was built into the packaging. But shock, horror. This wasn't important at all. Only 4% of retailers actually use this functionality to transport the kits to their villages. So what we thought was the innovation wasn't the innovation at all. This is how the kits got to the villages, just like any other thing gets to these village shops, strapped on the back of a bicycle. And this is why this works. And this is no secret to the likes of Coca-Cola and Unilever and all those people that get their products to these remote villages. You have to start with your customer and what they want. And then you have to market like mad what they want and make it profitable for people to fulfill the demand that you create in their minds. It's called a value chain. And everyone along that distribution chain responds to that same motivation. They're all adding value, they're getting the product, either they're making the product or they're getting it closer and closer to the customer. They're adding value and taking a profit to do that. And this pulls the medicine out to the remotest of communities. Now those of you who work in the health sector will realize that this is not normally how the health sector works. The health sector work does it completely the other way around. It starts with an expert or a board of experts with totally good intentions trying to work out what they think people need. For this to work, you have to know what people want. Need and want are not interchangeable words. They're completely different and, they're very imp and that difference is really important in this situation. Now, this kit thing not going in the crates was a real problem for us because we'd won so many awards globally. This product won product design of the year in 2013. It beat Nike trainers. It beat a really cool set of Bang & Olufsen wireless speakers. It beat the Olympic cauldron. This was product design of the year 2013. And by 2014, we threw it out. This is what the world has signed up to, and it wasn't working. But it's okay, because this is where the business guru Stephen Covey comes in, who said the main thing in business is to keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> so there were an uncomfortable sort of 10 minutes when we realized this wasn't working, and then we thought of this and we felt fine. And the main thing for us is not designing cool things that win awards. 
the main thing was to get diarrhea treatment to those caregivers so they could treat their children. So once we, we felt better after this, we still had to combat all the design people who said we've deserted our principles and all that. But anyway, we, that was easy to deal with once we stuck to our purpose. So we had to have a rethink. And nothing was sacred in this rethink. We ploughed all the learning from the trial into a redesign of Kichiomoyo. The branding stayed the same. And nothing was sacred here. We looked at every single component uh, with a view to making the kit better, but also bringing down the cost so we totally eliminated the subsidy. And we ended up with two formats. The screw top, we call it, and the flexi pack. Now, both of these incorporate as many of the features as possible um, of the original design, but obviously they're much cheaper and much more functional, and they don't fit in coke crates. They don't need to fit in coke crates. Now, I lost my timing. I'm just wondering if I got time to just demonstrate this quickly. This is the screw top. It's 100% Zambian. Even the packaging is made in Zambia. It's based on a process for making uh, um, uh, plastic jars. But if anyone calls this a jar here, they're in trouble. It's a screw top. Uh, you take out the um, contents. You uh, fill it with safe water up to the mark. I don't know if you can see this on the... You, um, I've been told not to move this around, but actually it's quite, quite difficult. <laughs> you take out one of the ORS sachets, rip the top off, fill it like that, Ta -da. <laughs> put the top back on. And there you have perfectly mixed, clean ORS. Ideal for storing stops getting the storage aspect of it is good and it's quite a quite good cup cheers <laughs> however that was too expensive so the flexi pack became the scale up version of the kit and as you can see we were even able to uh, keep the measuring functionality even in such a simple simple packaging the screw top, as I said, got put to one side at this point because of cost. We then, having got our, um, uh, our scale-up design in place, we then just started marketing it like mad, just like Coke would do, just like Unilever would do uh, for their products, for any fast-moving consumer good. Clear messaging, be wise, be prepared, beat diarrhea. We want women to have one of these in their home, so when diarrhea strikes, um, they've got something to treat their child with. Things were going quite well. Sales were increasing. They were in the supermarkets now. Remember, we've gone from zero availability to nationwide in supermarkets. And at that time, the government came along and said, oh, actually, we want one of those uh, to give away in our health centers, or at least some of our health centers. So they came along with this windfall order for, our, for the manufacturer of half a million kits. We had to rebrand it so that it wasn't confused with the one that you could buy in the shops. And it was at this point that the decision, the design decision right early on to carry the branding on the leaflet really came into its own. Because all we had to do here is change the leaflet and it looked like a completely different product. But actually it's exactly the same product. It's just got a different instruction leaflet within it. So it looks completely different. This is given away free in some health centers in Zambia now, about 10% of them, and the other ones available in the shops. And this is the production line. You can see quite a modest production line. Uh, this, is the, this production line is used for, to produce both, both sorts of pack. Uh, as I say, things were going really well. The sales were going up. We've got this windfall order from, from the government or the manufacturer had. And then the Zambian Revenue Authority said, ah, ah. But your kit has soap in it. And that's, v that's vatable. So all of a sudden, this highly sensitive, of the, or this, this product that was highly sensitive to price has 60% added to it. So that required a really quick rethink on behalf of our manufacturers. So they came up with this, uh, Kit Yamoyo Essential. Same packaging, different leaflet. <laughs> Again, carrying the branding on the leaflet is very helpful in this circumstance. And it's exactly the same 
um, as the original kit Yamoya, but it didn't have any soap in it. So no VAT, and obviously we, we, we removed the cost of the soap. We, that, that, it's with some regret that that happened, because we want to carry this hygiene message as well, but that, that it, was a, it was a necessity. So then we went into a period where the kit Yamoya essential and the original kit Yamoya sat on the shelf together, looking very, very similar indeed, but at least we'd reserved two spots on the supermarket shelf. Um, this one was 19%, or this one was 19% cheaper than this one. So sales of this one went up, sales of this one started to fall. But we still had the slot on the supermarket shelf. While we ran around, or our manufacturer did, ran around resurrecting the screw top. And so two weeks ago, literally, this was a picture taken on one of the supermarkets uh, with the screw top sitting next to the, uh, the essential without soap. So the screw top, screw top has soap, and obviously it's more expensive than the other one. It, it attracts VAT, but also looks, looks, looks much more expensive. So we'll see how that, how that goes. Just want to finish off by giving you some idea of sales in 2016. Now this shows the massive impact of the government order. However, government orders come and they go and we may not get an order. The manufacturer may not get an order next year and or they may not. So um, the foundation of everything is the commercial sector. We need to get that, keep that going and grow that uh, so that the manufacturer is able to respond to government orders when they come. Uh, that's the sales. We've sold over half a million uh, uh, from the factory since, since we started. And um, our trials, um, the modelling on our trial indicated that we saved three lives for every thousand kits used. The case fatality rate for diarrhoea is actually one in 2,000 cases. So we saved between 200 and 1,000 lives since we started. If you want to follow us, uh, follow the non-supermarket non side of what we do, we publish this KPI dashboard twice a month on our website, and you can see the, the URL there, colalive.org slash dashboards. Um, and I'll just finish off with a, a few key lessons which I think are like broadly applicable. Firstly, we have to foster innovation. And the reason we have to foster innovation is we need the step change that innovation can deliver. Incremental improvements, which is happening, is not good enough. Uh, it's, and it's certainly not good enough for developing countries. The divide between the have and the have-nots in the health space is growing. Um, we need to prioritize innovation away from new product development to innovation around access. We need to fail fast and move on. You're not going to start off on a journey and take the exact route that you thought, a point made earlier. We need to focus on want more than just need and we need to make our partnerships smart. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. Um, I think we have time for possibly one question, one or two questions. Um, gentlemen over here, please do stand up and state your name and which organization you're from. Dorji Mundell from BSR. Um, thanks for a fascinating presentation. You, you described brilliantly the, 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 the process of fostering innovation, proving concept, uh, redesign and everything. That's half of what we need. The, uh, the second half is about really going to large scale. And I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on how you can go from uh, these operations in one or two countries to then kind of driving large scale adoption and uptake and replication across kind of a much larger uh, range of countries and with the backing of your, your commercial partners as well. Yes, well, we've just um, completed a, a globalization plan which actually um, describes the methods we wish to use to go from scale up in Zambia to this being adopted in other countries. And it will vary from country to country, but our basic approach is to um, target the countries where we could have high, the highest impact, and Nigeria would be first on the list there, because, mainly because of the number of people, but also because of the high um, diarrhea incidence, and create that smart network 
in those, in those countries. Now, the smart network I put up on the screen was a very complicated one, and that's the sort of one you need if you're literally starting from scratch. Once you move to, once you've proven the concept and you're moving to scale up, the partners you need actually are just a handful. So it's much easier to do than what we had to do in Zambia. And then we as Color Life will support that partnership with anything that we can provide that they need. So the designs, um, advice on the, pr the process to use, how to deal with the regulator, and so on. Now, we have very strong relationships because of the various awards that we've won with GSK, with Johnson & Johnson. Uh, and so they, they are going to be key inroads to those, to those different countries. We also have uh, the relationship with uh, supermarkets. And ShopRite in particular has, has outlets in more, not just in Zambia, but in other places as well. So we will use those like inns, if you like, to start these partnerships going. And in some countries, we will, you know, no, people won't be interested. In other countries, it might just happen. And in Nigeria, I'm not going to go into any details right now, in Nigeria, things are looking very, very promising with Cola Life actually having to do very little other than kick the thing off and pass over uh, our designs. So I hope that answers your question. I have one more from, uh, from you in the front. If you can bring the microphone, please. Oh. Uh, my name is Abinet, Abinet Prano from Amref, Uganda. Uh, this is a very interesting presentation. I really like it, especially when it comes to packaging and creating access by using uh, outlets like supermarkets among others. And uh, you've been also using an analogy like, you know, Coca-Cola. Uh, what we know is Coca-Cola has been investing a lot in promotion and making people more delighted to use their commodities. But now, if we really have an ambition to scale up these programs, how are we going to do the promotion? How are we going to really work on educational part? Because we need also to delight women and households to really use these commodities. So I want you to really uh, give us some more light on this one. Right, well, our, our, our approach and our theory is that, which is yet to be proven, it has to be said, our theory is that we will have to launch this product once. So there's a lot of effort now going into awareness raising and promotion. So I've, I, I just gave one example there of billboards. But we have a local NGO in Zambia which is recruiting retailers in those uh, community retailers and working to train them so that they can stock the product and advise customers appropriately. We also have the partnership with the Ministry of Health. So although this is a commercial product, the community health workers um, within the health centers are promoting and demonstrating the product to caregivers when they come to the clinics. Um, and we hope to reach a tipping point where, say, a third of the people in, or care, a third of caregivers in Zambia have heard of Kit Yamoyo, and half of them have actually used it. And that will be enough so that then background marketing um, will, uh, will be enough to keep the product in the market forever. So we're investing now, or our donors who are supporting the project are investing now in this launch, which is a massive investment, to shape the market and then the profitability of the product will be enough to do background marketing once the product is launched. I hope that answers your I mean, we want to do the same as Coke. The, what Coke do is you go into um, somewhere for a drink, and they have been successful in achieving this. You go in there thinking, shall I have a Coke or shall I have something else? We want people to go to their local shop and say, think, shall I buy Kit Yamoyo? Or shall I buy something else? That's the point we need to get to. Okay. Um, we are running slightly over, so I'm afraid we're going to have to finish the session there. But I'm sure Simon will be around to answer your questions afterwards. Thank you, Simon. Thank you.